In this video, we're going to cover a solution that um, will solve the problem to write a program to print the numbers 99 to 0 in a 10 by 10 grid pattern. And we'll only use a single loop to solve this problem. So the idea is that we want to print the numbers from 99 to 0 and we want to print them in this grid pattern. So if you have a look, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers across and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers down. Okay, so to solve this problem, we're going to break it down into a number of um, smaller problems that we can solve and then you'll see how they come together to give us a complete solution. So the first kind of subtask that we're going to look at is um, how we are going to construct our loop. So, okay, if we have a look, the first number that we want to print is 99 and um, the last number that we want to print is 0. So by looking at the first number that we want to print, that gives us a clue of how to initialize our loop counter variable. So we're going to set j equal to 99 to create an initial state. And then when, when do we want the loop to finish? Well, we want the loop to finish when we reach and print 0. So the guard on the loop then must um, stop the loop when we have printed 0. It mustn't go any further. You'll notice also that in this case, we're going from 99 to 0, not from 0 to 99. So we're actually working our way um, backwards down a number line from 99 to 0. So we're counting backwards from 99 to 0. So that gives us a clue as to how we are going to make progress because we're not incrementing up the number line, we're actually decrementing down the number line, we're counting down from 99 to 0. So our progress is not going to be j equal to j plus 1, because that would mean that we'd start incrementing from 99 upwards. What we need to do is actually decrement j by 1 each time around our loop to count down from 99 to 0. So with that information, we can actually construct a loop, a for loop. And what we're going to focus on here for the first time is not the format of the numbers and not how they look in a grid pattern. We're just simply going to print the numbers from 99 to 0 using our for loop. So our for loop is going to look like this. It's going to look like uh, for int j equal to 99 because we're going to start at 99. The guard on our loop is going to stop the loop when we have printed 0. So we need to say j greater than or equal to 0 for the guard on our loop because uh, j is going to start off at 99 and we want to continue as long as j has a value that is greater than or equal to 0. So as long as j is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to continue to loop around and print the numbers from 99 to 0. Now, how do we make progress? Well, remember, we're not incrementing. We're not moving in a positive direction up a number line. We're moving in a negative direction. We're decrementing or moving backwards down the number line from 99 to 0. So to do that, we say j is equal to j minus 1 this time. And the loop body this time round is just going to be to print the value of j. So we'll say system dot out dot print f and uh, I'm going to use percent d and I'm just going to put a space in here for the moment and I'm going to print the value of j. So let's run this and um, check to see do we indeed have the values from 99 down to 0. So as you can see in our program output, we now have all the values from 99 down to 0. They're just printed out uh, to fill the space on my screen. So we don't have them in the format or in the layout that we want at the moment. And that's the next thing that we're going to try and solve. So 
if you have a look at the grid pattern, what you'll notice is that we start off at 99 and we work our way down to 90. And uh, when we reach 90, we print the value 90 and then we go to a new line and print 89 all the way down to 80. When we reach 80, we print a new line and print from 79 all the way down to 70 and so on and so on. So it is really only when we reach these numbers of 90, 80, 70, 60, 50 that we want to move to a new line and print the next 10 digits. Okay, or the next 10 numbers. So with that in mind, what we could do is we could check to see if we are currently on a number that is evenly divisible by 10. Because all these ones, 8, 90, 80, 70, 60, and so on, are all evenly divisible by 10. And they're the points at which we want to do a new line. When we get down to 0, we're finished anyway, so we don't have to worry about printing a new line. Okay, so how would we do that? Well, we could check using an if statement to see if j is a number that is evenly divisible by 10. And if it is, it's one of those numbers, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, and so on. And if it's a number that is evenly divisible by 10, well, then we can just move to a new line. So we can say if j mod 10 is equal to or equivalent to remember your equals equals is equivalent to zero then what do we want to do well we want to move to a new line so how do we do that we can say system dot out dot print ln and we're not printing any message or anything like that we're just simply using the print ln statement to move to a new line so that should do it for us um, that should give us kind of the output that we want um, in the 10 by 10 grid pattern so let's have a look and see what the output to this program is. Okay, so if you have a look at the output, you'll see that we're getting from 99 down to 90, from 89 down to 80, and from 79 down to 70. So our if statement has worked. When we reach 90, we have a system.out.println that causes a new line, and we continue printing the rest of the numbers on new lines. Okay, but if you have a look down the bottom of the output here, you see that when we get down into single digits, all the numbers, all the single digit numbers are left justified. In other words, they're pushed over to the left. And because they don't take up as much space as the double digit numbers, you see that row of the output is actually kind of bunched up towards the left. So how we can solve this problem is by using um, padding. So in our formatter here, percent %d, what we can do is specify a number of padding spaces to use when we print each number. And that means that the number of padding spaces will force each number that gets printed to take up the same amount of horizontal space take up the same amount width of characters so that when we print the single digits, they will um, be printed to the right of the padding. There'll be a number of padding spaces in front of the single digits that will um, format the output the way we want it. And to do that, we say percent %d, and instead of just having the percent %d, we're going to put the number 4 in here so we're going to use four padding spaces to print each number, the each current value of j. And the padding spaces will force the single digit numbers to be pushed over to the right. So for the single digit numbers, there will in fact be three spaces in front of the single digit numbers. And um, for the double digit numbers, there'll be two spaces. So each number takes up four um columns for column character spaces giving us our even output so if we save that program and run it again we'll now see that we get our nicely formatted output and you can see that even the single digit numbers are now aligned uh, to the right and we've completed our program